my job here is to talk to you about why we care about this. So this is an example of something that can actually happen with big data AI. This one actually is not using that complicated of AI. So how many of you run Macintosh computers? It's a good percentage of the audience. Uh, we know from statistical analysis that you guys are willing to pay more for stuff. <laughs> the, uh, I didn't say it. This is the marketing view of the world. I don't know if you realize it, but every time your browser connects to any web page, it tells you that web page several facts about you, and it does it for good technical reason. It tells them what operating system you're running, what browser you're running. It does that so that this phone and this computer can be given two different user interfaces that are more compatible. So you notice how you open something on a phone, it might look different than it does in a browser. However, that also allows me to do something really basic and ask, is this a Mac that's talking to me right now? And if it is, then maybe I should change the, what the word relevant means when I search. So you notice that most searches uh, come up as the most relevant first, but no one is defined relevant. Relevant, if you're a Macintosh on Orbitz, means the more pricier ones come first. And if you're on Windows, the ordering might be slightly different. And this can be used a bit more deeply. So this is uh, the Admiral um, company. The Admiral Insurance was trying to use Facebook posts to predict who was likely to get in a car crash and become expensive and who was likely to drive well. Basically, after this was published, Facebook had a massive fit at Admiral and refused to do this, mostly because it became public. But Admiral's not the only one. I have seen um, talks by groups like Tesco, who will sign you up for a discount if you are willing to connect your Tesco card to your insurance through Tesco. So that they can do data analysis and figure out if they can figure out if what purchases you're making indicates anything about your driving, and then give you different discounts based on your behavior. And this is used a whole lot. This is a very complicated <coughs> slide, and I'm mostly showing it because it is complicated. And I will come back to the slide again, but what I mostly want you to look at is on the left-hand side, notice there's a whole bunch of different stuff that goes through fuzzy stuff in the middle, and comes out at the other end at something entitled marketing, individual references, directory service, etc. The companies that go and put these correlations together are not just the ones you actually know about. They're usually something called a data aggregator. So a data aggregator will take data from all sorts of places and try to collect it together, including things like public record, uh, bills, all sorts of things. And they, they put that together in order to make a lot of the inferences you might see in some of the news articles I was just talking about. Since one of my roles here is to be one of the tech people, I'm now going to try and teach you how web browsers do this. Uh, so what you're looking at here is a completely fake website that I came up with. Um, <coughs> websites, uh, this is going to be a shock to me, are not flat and they're not like newspapers. They are built dynamically in time. So if I load a web page and someone else loads a web page, we may not even get the same web page. So the way that works is that we have this page. Um, on the left, you know, it's as much of these kind of slashy gray box things. When I asked for cutedogs.com, what it did was it gave me back a template, kind of like a recipe. It says, all right, if you would like this web page, this is what you as the computer needs to do. First thing is you loaded the first page, which is the index.html one that's, that's been highlighted. But then it would like me to load a couple pictures, a CSS file, a JavaScript, a JPEG and another JavaScript file. And so if we go through and we actually do that and we see how this visually changes as it's being built, we'll notice uh, that we load a dog, we load the other dog, we load a CSS, which changed the color. If you've ever seen a page, you load it and it looked really drab and then suddenly just snapped, like all the objects just suddenly moved around. And it does this when you're on a slow network connection. The CSS has just loaded. <coughs> And then it starts loading tracker.js. So you notice that box in the middle kind of vanished, but nothing turned up. So everything it's loading is not visible. In this case, tracker.js is loading, which causes no visible imp implication, but is now running code on the computer. Uh, similarly, we may load an invisible JPEG. So we pulled a video, uh, an image down this time, but it happened to be white. So it's now invisible. And then the last one's the most interesting one, so we're going to load connect.js, and it's going to run some code that actually changes the website itself. 
So if I do that again, you'll notice there was a box under the dog, and now there's a box on the side. So what happened is it pulled the code down. The code actually modified that recipe, it modified the template, put another element in, and added something to the bottom of the template, and then we load, in this case, the Facebook logo. So there's a couple points I want you to get from this. Content from your website is coming from many places. It doesn't have to come from one place. It's built dynamically, and it, the thing that's being pulled down can actually change the content of the main website to pull down more stuff. And this creates this entire supply chain. This is a pretty version of that supply chain. So the idea here is that the first party, that website you meant to load, pulls data from a whole bunch of other websites. Those websites, in turn, much like that Facebook logo I just showed you, can then pull more data from more websites. These things get big. So this is the Sears.com website. Uh, this, to be clear, this is actually an aggregate. Um, it's done across multiple different loadings by many different people. So this is the full supply chain, not the supply chain a given person would have. A given person would only see a percentage of this if you reloaded it and you just kept doing it, you would get this whole supply chain. And what you're seeing here, the sizes are the things that are making this page slow. So this is, uh, there's a privacy tool called Ghostry. This is actually what they sell to companies to stay live. They tell them why their web pages are slow. But it's a beautiful graphic. Um, this is something called Lightbeam. It's a very different done graphic, but this is done off of my own computer. So for this one, I tried to load the Guardian, the Register, and the Telegraph. Uh, I did it normally, and then I did it with Adblock Plus. You will notice the sizes are different. And then because I forgot and wandered away from my computer and left it running for three hours, that's what it looked like three hours later. It kept loading stuff. And every time it loaded stuff, it didn't just load, reload the stuff to refresh it, it loaded new ads, which required me loading them off of a different element. So it was actually grabbing more content. And then I will kind of end on this slide. So the thing I talked about here is actually just the non-public information at the bottom. Imagine I could take all the information that was being collected off the many different sites and then put them all together. And then it becomes useful for some of the things we were just talking about. And because I like to end all slides with actual practical advice, uh, this is a list of software that I have used, sometimes used, or can be somewhat useful. The two at the bottom, I'm dead serious, will break your browser. Please do not install them unless you really need it. Uh, but the other ones are, broadly speaking, interesting and useful. Thank you very much.